Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us across the fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Home fires are deadly. Nationally, they claim more lives each year than all other natural disasters combined. In Vermont, home fires are the most common disaster the Red Cross responds to. As of November 1st, the organization has assisted 270 Vermonters in at least 78 different home fires around the state. And now that we're into the heating season, the risk of fire, of course, increases. That's why the Red Cross is reminding all of us to test our smoke alarms. And if you need one installed, the Red Cross will do it for free. To learn more about free installation and other life-saving information when it comes to house fires, I'm joined by Aaron McIntyre. Aaron is the Regional Disaster Officer for the Red Cross of Northern New England. Good afternoon, Aaron. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. So what's the number one thing we can each do to lessen the risk of dying in a home fire? Yeah, I think we touched on it a little bit. Working smoke detectors absolutely can cut our risk of dying in a home fire by half. We want one on every floor, inside and outside of any sleeping areas. Okay, awesome. And we all should, should have those instead of lying around like sometimes I've had <laughs> some. So um, first and foremost, of course, smoke alarms save lives but it's not quite as simple as, as putting them up and letting them do their job, or is it? Uh, it is not. Again, like anything, we want to make sure there's a little bit of maintenance and a little bit of check. So our big campaign right now is our turn and test. You mentioned turn those clocks back, test those alarms. So if that includes changing the batteries, you want to make sure that it's less than 10 years old. Uh, you want to know what it sounds like, so we know what to do. If that chirping noise is going off at 2 in the morning, we need to replace it or get a new battery in it. I have. Two models, one that is kind of a sealed unit that doesn't need any maintenance other than maybe vacuuming it every now and again to keep the dust off of it. And the other one that has the battery that we want to make sure replacing that battery every time we change the clocks. So every year you change the batteries. Great, great advice. And are, are all home smoke detectors equal? Are, is there a brand name that might matter or not? Uh, generally, any smoke detector is better than uh, having none at all. Uh, there's two different types out there you'll see, ionization and photoelectric. One is faster at seeing flame, one is better at seeing smoke. But again, we really say both are acceptable, not one is really better than the other. And again, better than no detector at all. <laughs> Indeed. So I have a detector. I understand the Red Cross will install it for me for free. We will. So for those who are unable to purchase or even install the detector, our teams will come out, do a home assessment, and then help and install detectors. Now we do the battery operated ones, so we do not do any of the hardwired ones that are existing in homes, but we will add uh, existing or replacements for battery powered smoke detectors. Awesome, so um, to get that service, Aaron, what do people need to do? Yep, uh, you can simply give us a call, 1-800-464-6692, or visit our website, redcross.org backslash in home fires, NNE for Northern New England. So, so you said that working smoke alarms can cut the risk of dying in a home fire in half. What are other ways that can, um, you know, how can a family uh, prepare for a potential fire? Yeah, so simple things. We know kind of the common cause of house fires. And so we want to make sure we're alert to those things. So cooking safety. Uh, never leaving anything in the kitchen unattended. Uh, we have a catchy little saying of keep an eye on what you fry. Uh, we talk about keeping safe distance around combustibles. So candles, fireplaces, anything that produces heat, space heaters, really making sure that we stay close to those, uh, following all of the manufacturer safety guidelines, and really just keeping an eye on anything with an open flame or combustible source. Fantastic. And, and again, when you say you put smoke alarms on every floor, do you put it right in the kitchen or right next to your wood stove or people are concerned that they go off all the time? Any, any thoughts about that? Yeah, so generally you want it as high in the room as possible, right? Smoke is gonna rise and we want that smoke where it's gonna collect at the highest point. Uh, obviously putting it right on top of the stove, it would go up all the time. So generally we look at in the kitchen area, in the hallway, if you were to think about smoke kind of coming up and collecting at a ceiling level, where would that smoke go? And so we look at kind of those access points of where everything in the room is gonna come together. Uh, in my house, it is right at the junction of where the hallway meets the kitchen at that intersection right there is a perfect spot for that smoke detector. Awesome. And so, Aaron, a touch on the importance of also having a, a, an escape plan. Yeah, so on average, we find that you have about two minutes to escape a home fire, which if you think about it, two minutes is really fast. And so having that plan kind of already in your head, already mapped out, practice, 
and, and know exactly what to do is gonna help you get out in those two minutes. And, and what, what if there's smoke in the way? What if there's smoke where your, your planned um, escape is? Yeah, and so this is why we say pre-planning, always having an idea beforehand. So a second means out of the house. We always look at every room and try to say, is there a second way I can get out of this room? Might be a window, might be a sliding door, might be out an unusual path. If you have that back door that you never use, now might be the time to make sure it's working. Okay. If you do have to get out, we say stay low. Stay low. Stay low, yeah. check the doors, check for heat, and always stay as low as possible. So in a home fire, everyone, of course, is in danger, but some age groups are at higher risk. Yep, oftentimes, unfortunately, children under the age of five uh, and those over the age of 65 often are more likely at risk and often twice as likely to die uh, in a home fire than the rest of the U.S. population. So we need to work with our kids and elders to really work out that plan and, and talk with them about how this works. Absolutely. And one of the, the themes of this year is knowing what a smoke detector sounds like. Children oftentimes will hear it. There may be that panic of not knowing what it is. So the more that you can test your alarm and teach them when the sound goes off, what it means and practice, make it a game, make it a, a something to do where they challenge them to get out in their two minutes and have that safe place to get to. Right. You certainly don't want to frighten them, but you do want to teach them this is this is what you do and this is what we're all going to do when when this happens. Absolutely. And and elders also, um, is that a trickier conversation or? Uh, it, it is. Oftentimes it's, uh, you know, there, there's maybe hearing impairment or mobility issues. And so understanding that is there room free of clutter? Are the paths in and out of the homes free of clutter to make that easier to get out? We do offer as well, they call them bed shaker alarms. So maybe for those that are hard of hearing or deaf, that we have a, an alarm that is actually tied into a bed that will vibrate on the bed when it goes off. That's a great idea. And of course, since, um, you know, the, the number one cause of fires is in the kitchen and sometimes people can be forgetful. Absolutely. Yeah. And so again, we really, really emphasize, keep an eye on what you fry. Don't ever leave anything alone in the kitchen. Even if it's that harmless boy, the phone is ringing or the doorbell goes off and I'm just going to run to go check it. Unfortunately, that's when that moment can strike. Okay, terrific. And then, and then there are fire extinguishers, of course, but how many of us would really know how to properly use one if we suddenly found ourselves trying to extinguish a fire? So we have a professional um, for us. He's a former fire, firefighter and now the UVM emergency manager, John Marcus, will show us what's up. Before I actually demonstrate the extinguisher, there are a few things that I need to tell you. Whenever there's a fire, you need to call for help first. Even if you think you can extinguish the fire, call for help, notify occupants in the area, pull the building fire alarm, call your emergency number to make sure that the fire department is on the way. Then you can attempt to fight the fire. A portable fire extinguisher is only for small fires. It will not put out a room full of fire. It's for fires in the incipient stage, a cardboard box, a recycling bin, a trash can, something small that is not spread to other objects in the room. You also need to be sure to leave yourself a safe way out before you use the extinguisher. Make sure that you have a clear exit available just in case things don't go as planned. There are different types of fire extinguishers. Be familiar with the fire extinguishers in your area. There are several classes of fire. A class A fire is ordinary combustibles such as wood, paper, textiles, cardboard. Class B fires are flammable liquids or solvents such as fuels, gasoline, oils. Class C fires involved energized electrical equipment, basically anything that is plugged into a power source. And class D fires are flammable metals or combustible metals. These are fairly rare, but they are found in manufacturing and in chemical laboratories. Class K fires are kitchen fires, which involve deep frying of grease. And now we're ready to talk about how to use the fire extinguisher. There are four steps involved in using the fire extinguisher, and we use four letters to remember them. We use the letters PASS, P-A-S-S. -S. The P is for pull. You need to pull this safety pin out before the fire extinguisher will operate. The A is for aim. 
You remove the nozzle and aim at the base of the flames. You must aim at the base of the fire. If you aim at the flames, the extinguishing agent will pass through the flames and land harmlessly on the other side. The first S is for squeeze. You squeeze the handles together to discharge the agent. And the last S is for sweep. You sweep from side to side until the fire is completely out. P-A-S-S. -S. In this demonstration, we will be using water to extinguish the fire. Typically, multi-purpose fire extinguishers have a dry chemical agent, which comes out in a fine powder much like water. And now we're ready to do the demonstration. And that's how to safely and effectively use a fire extinguisher. Terrific. Our thanks to John Marcus from UVM Emergency Management. And uh, before we go, I'd like to check back with Aaron McIntyre of the Red Cross. Um, so, Aaron, first of all, remind viewers how they can get a free smoke alarm installment. Yep, uh, you can give us a call, 1-800-464-6692. Or again, visit our website, redcross.org backslash end home fires, N-N-E. Terrific. And uh, do you also, when, when it comes to fire extinguishers, do we need to think about replacing them as well? I mean. They do, yes. So they work on a uh, charge agent that keeps them pressurized and over time that can start to reduce. And most of them will have a little gauge on there, like a fuel gauge in your car that gives you kind of a green, red, and yellow. And so make sure that is checked as well and replace any of those that are in that area that need to be replaced. Terrific, and I was just reminded, smoking of course is another real hazard, so people need to be very careful if they're smokers. Absolutely, yeah, uh, obviously for you know a designated area, uh, a designated place to put the, the discarded cigarette butts, uh, preferably into a non-combustible area or somewhere that maybe won't even uh, you know, blow away in the wind if it's outside and they're sitting on an ashtray out on a porch deck right. and could blow away and land under the deck, especially Got this it. time of year. Aaron, thank you so much for all your life-saving advice. All right, thank you very much. And thank you for joining us across the fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Stay well.